Good morning. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. What Paul is preaching today to the church in Rome and then to you and me seems pretty simple. What he said makes sense. I should be able then just now to say amen and sit down. Don't look so happy about that prospect, people. (laughs) I see you. That's not happening. When we think about owing somebody something, it's usually a financial debt, yes? And it's pretty easy to think about earning the money to pay someone off or to write a check and forget them than it is to love them, to care for them, to maybe fight with them, to fight for them, to have a relationship with them. Today we hear Jesus directly speaking to to relationship. The heart of our faith is not a set of teachings and rules about God. It is a relationship with God. It is the most important relationship that we will ever have. But a close second is our relationship with each other. We've spent the summer months at Lebanon and here in our home sanctuary learning about our relationships, how Jesus called his disciples not just to follow him, but to gather together to become a community, to literally become the church incarnate. He called them, and he calls us to care for one another, to pray for one another, to share our gifts and our burdens with each other. But then, right here, right this morning, smack dab in the middle of Matthew's gospel, the rubber hits the road. Because sometimes, a lot of times, love has to get tough. You know, right now, all around the world, churches are gathering together to listen to the same passage, maybe in a different language, with new people, but still, God's church is hearing the same gospel reading on the same day, and I think that's kind of awesome to think about. But unfortunately, even when we are hearing the same good news, people in church disagree, argue, Not everyone gets along and sometimes ends up hurting one another through words and actions. Jesus knew this would happen. He knew it would happen to his church because, after all, church is a community of fallible, prideful human beings. That's you and me, of course. I think that's why we get this uncomfortable teaching offered to us today. Jesus offers some advice to all who are in a difficult relationship within the body of the church He gives us advice, and then he makes us a promise. So let's look at his advice. It's a doozy, by the way. It requires bravery, moving out of your comfort zone. It's as simple and complicated as it sounds. Here it is again. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. The NIV translation speaks to relationship even closer. If your brother or sister sins against you, go and speak to them. That's a brother or sister in the church he's talking about. So Jesus is telling us not to ignore the disagreement, not to expect someone else to deal with it or hope it'll just go away. And boy, is that a big ask for those of us who are conflict averse. (laughs) It's tough to have a conflict one-on-one, not to get angry or defensive to share our personal perspective in a a vulnerable way without bringing everybody from Instagram and Snapchat in with us, to hash something out without holding a press conference or a gossip chain or that inevitable conversation in the parking lot. Just imagine, though, my friends, if we did that first step faithfully. What a difference this one little action would make in all of our relationships but it's not easy. It takes courage. It takes practice. And we know it doesn't always work out. We don't always get resolution. Those are the times to ask for help. Notice this isn't the first step. Bringing others into the issue only happens if conflict continues to exist. But then finally, Jesus tells us there are those times when there is someone so stubborn, someone so unrepentant that the whole community gets involved. And we hear this from Jesus. 
If the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. And I know that sounds like Jesus is saying we're supposed to write them off, to forget about them. But let me ask you this. How often do we see Jesus hanging out with the Gentiles and the tax collectors? A bunch. I mean, the author of Matthew's gospel was a tax collector. So I'm thinking it means don't write them off. It means care about them, even when they choose words and they choose actions on their own to separate themselves from church and community. So that's Jesus' advice. Along with that advice, he gives us a couple of important promises today. Truly, I tell you, he says, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. That first promise is about agreement, and it's pretty powerful. But Jesus doesn't end with that, and the next promise is pretty remarkable. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there among them. That isn't just about agreement. That's about gathering in Jesus' name. Not just where two or three agree in Jesus' name, but where two or three are gathered in Jesus' name. Presumably, this could include the two who cannot listen to each other about a matter of sin or how to handle it or a disagreement. Even there, perhaps especially there, Christ Jesus is present. Now, most of you know this about me at this point. Sometimes I speak kind of simply, maybe I'm a little goofy even, but I do like a good prop, a visual, if you will, to help me understand. So I went to our attic this week, and I found this to help us think about our lesson. This is Jesus. Now, I'll admit, we have to store this in the attic, or him in the attic, because my children and my wife like to plant it in places that scare me when I walk into a room. <laughs> no, this is not an icon. It's a cardboard Jesus. But think about this with me. When we're gathered around a table in joy, or in confrontation, or in conversation, or in celebration, or in conflict, Jesus is there. That makes every situation more bearable, more beautiful, I think more sacred. Yes, conflict can be sacred, knowing that Jesus, and, and not silly cardboard Jesus, but truly the Christ is with us in all things. Matthew's gospel is governed by the promised real presence of God. And this promise isn't just a doctrine to be believed, it is a relationship to be lived into and then enjoyed. There is nothing more important to God than our relationship with God and then our relationship with each other. So let us tend to both of these relationships faithfully. Welcome back together, St. James Parish family. Amen. <laughs>